Hi guys and welcome to the final Mav update video. So Mav actually went home a couple of days ago. Um, so I've gotten all his most recent videos together and I'm going to talk you through the last four weeks. So basically the first time I rode him in the arena was on this day that you're seeing now. And then I'm going to show you how we get from this to this in four weeks. So as you can see, the first time that I'm riding him, you know, he's very nervous. He's not very forward. Um, he's very, very scared of that gate over in the far corner. Um, and, you know, I'm a little bit tentative too. I don't want to him to, you know, have a little explosion or anything like that. So I kind of let him go forward and then I kind of try and do a circle, but he just wants to actually turn back on himself and go back to the gate. So I just kind of keep going. Where I'm riding him is where I would lunge him. So I thought that would be a good place to start. It's where he's most comfortable. Um, but he was very, very nervous and not very forward. We do eventually get going. Um, you know, there's not, not too much drama for his first time in the, in the arena. He's a little bit nervous, a little bit spooky, a little bit, you know, forward and back and that, but not too bad. Basically, all I want from him is to go forward. So I use my reins to steer, but as soon as he's going the way I want, my reins are very, very loose, like there's actual slack in them. Because for me, the most important thing is that the horse goes forward. Because if your horse isn't going forward, you have nothing. That is the very basic of the training scale is, is impulsion. So um, there he has a little bit of a fright, but you know, nothing too bad at all for his first time in the arena. And it's quite a spooky arena with all the hedges. So yeah, basically for the first day or two, it is just all about going forward, forward, forward. You know, I'm barely touching his mouth. There's slack in the reins. I'm just encouraging him to go forward and I'm waiting for him to build that confidence out of getting um, some good experiences. So I just do a little bit on the other rein before calling it a day and giving him lots of rewards. You know, he starts the day by not even wanting to go around the outside of the arena and ends by doing a nice trot, um, a full lap on each rein. So I couldn't be, I was very, very happy with that. I do a circle and as you can see, as I come off the arena, that's where he, you know, he slows down again. He gets a little bit fussy in the mouth. He's not really sure um, that all comes with the time. So this is about two days later. So straight off the bat, he's a lot more confident. I'm able to go straight, straight away around the arena. But again, as you can see, there's complete slack on my reins. I'm just using my outside rein to keep him to the outside of the arena. But all I want, again, is for him to go forward. He is more forward, but I'm still having to, you know, work quite hard to keep him going. As you can see there, I'm giving little nudges almost every stride because if I stop, he will also stop. <laughs> Um, but it's just again about a nice confident ride um, I think we do a little bit more of you know a little circle here and there just to practice that but generally I'm just going around the outside and building his confidence so then I pick up a whip to try and get a little bit more impulsion on him um, I didn't pick one up straight away because he was obviously you know, it was his first time being ridden and I didn't want to give him a fright or anything. But um, then I pick it up just to get that bit more impulsion. And as you can see, he does slowly um, become more forward. Um, you know, I give him a little tap here and there just to back up my leg. He's not afraid of the whip. He knows well, you know, what it is. Um, he just knows that it means, oh, come on now, we really need to go forward. And he goes, OK, that's no problem. So at the start, I have the whip. I'm going nice and forward. My reins are still got a lot of slack in them. Um, just working on going forward. Then I decide it's time to just do a little bit of work with the contact because now he's going forward. I can do that. 
So what I do is I keep a very steady pressure on the reins. He really fights me. But as soon as he gives, you can see there he had a little... Um, he kind of softened his neck and relaxed a little bit. Then I gave the reins as a reward. So this was an accidental canter, which is why he's just kind of <laughs> cantering away a bit. Um, he just started cantering. I said, yeah, sure, we'll go with it. But as you can see, you know, he's really... I can't really let him just canter around on a loose rein. But he's really fighting me. You know, he has his mouth open there. Um, he's definitely not, you know, accepted the bit. But it's only his second time being ridden in the arena. So this is just a very honest version of where he's, where he's, they start, you know, as young horses. Um, so, yeah, you know, he's, got his, you know, he's chomping at the bit a bit. And he's not really sure about it. But anyway, then we go back to the trot after we have that little canter. And again, there I gave a big release. You know, I had contact on the reins. He softened his neck and I give him a big release as a reward. And then basically just by repetition, he learns that when he feels that contact, I want him to um, relax downwards as opposed to lifting his head and fighting the contact. So just a lot of rep repetition. And the most important thing throughout all this is that he stays going forward. Um, you know, he can't be, he needs to have power in the trot, can't be slow and dead. Which is easier said than done on a week three-year-old. So I change the rein and we have a little go on the other side. So on the left rein, I was working very hard to get any sort of, you know, good um, movement. And I think he really learned from the left rein. And then when I switched to the right rein, which is his a little bit of a stronger rein, he got it a lot quicker. And as you can see already here, you know, I put on a bit of contact. I loosen the reins. And as long as he stays quite soft in his neck, you know, I keep a pretty relaxed contact on the reins. You know, it's not like I have um, a big hold of him all the time. Just when he sticks his head up, I just put a little bit of contact on the reins. Just to say, hey, come on, just relax now a little bit um, and lower your head. And... He picked it up really quickly on the right rein. Obviously, I do not want him going in, you know, a really strict outline like you would see in like a competition horse or like an older horse. Like he's way too weak for that. He's only a baby. But at the same time, I don't want him going around with his head up in the air and thinking that that's what I want and developing the wrong muscles. It's important that he does it correct, somewhat correctly from the start. So this is a different day, this is another couple of days later, maybe even a, a week later. Um, I only ride him in the arena a couple of times a week, the rest of the time he's lunging, groundwork, things like that. So this is the second time I canter him. You can see already he's a lot more balanced in the canter, it's not as much, a, you know, he's not as worried. So he's a lot um, softer in the mouth and in his neck and I can relax my reins a little bit and trust him and he feels quite good. See there, he poked his nose a little bit, but when he feels the contact, he just lowered his head again into a, a just a bit more of a relaxed outline. Um, so I was really happy with that. You can see he's a lot more accepting of the bit in his mouth, but that was just a confidence thing. You know, the first time he countered, he was just a bit like, what's going on? And he wasn't sure. Okay. So then I canter on the right rein as well. So this was the first time kind of asking for the canter. Um, and you can see that he struck off disunited but then he changed his lead himself and you can also see that he is a lot more relaxed in the contact again you know i don't want his nose tucked in you know i'm happy his nose is you know sticking out a little bit but i just want his neck to be relaxed and not you know high um and then his mouth to be quite soft and not you know fighting the bit so this to me is really nice you know he looks relaxed um he's just popping along easy um, he looks like he's quite happy. So then we do some more trotting. Um, just practicing the exact same. Obviously it's not perfect. You know, there's moments where it looks really good. And then he'll open his mouth and lift his head. And then I'll just put a little bit of contact on. Um, and then he generally will lower his head and relax into the contact again. He has a big spook of these chickens, bless him. But I just show them to him just so you can see what they are and realise, oh no, I know the chickens, that's fine. And then he just trots off lovely no again. In his head. You can also see that he's a lot more forward in these clips. Um, I'm not using the whip at all, I'm just holding it there in case I need it. 
but I don't really need to. He's a lot more, okay, a bit too forward. He has a little spook there. <laughs> but that's nothing. And he comes back to me straight away. You know, he's a very, very good boy. We do a little circle here. And you can see our circles are getting a little bit more confident. So when I take him off the outside of the arena, he stays going forward. Um, when I ask him to turn, he, you know, accepts that contact and um, goes with it instead of, you know, having a little fight. So very, very happy with all this. Here we're changing the rain again. You know, he's a lot more confident when he comes off the edge of the arena. He's staying in a little bit of a nice soft outline now as well. And we can see that our left rain is improved to the level of the right rein you know that's kind of equaled up and as you can see when he's here in his nice little outline you know nice and relaxed i don't really have any contact on the reins you know it's all very soft i really only use my contact when he starts lifting his head or getting tense just to remind him to relax but if he's you know relaxed and you know has a nice soft neck and soft mouth then you know, I'm not going to be pulling off his mouth all the time. It's just a nice, relaxed contact. And I find riding like this means that they do end up with quite a soft mouth because you're not pulling on it all the time. They know that when you use the reins, it really does mean something. Um, so, yeah. And then this is the most recent time I've ridden him. There was a week there I didn't get any videos because my parents were away. We just basically kept working on everything that I've just been showing you. Like it will get very repetitive for me to just keep talking about the same things. Um, but um, when my deaf parents were away, I just started doing some pole work on him. So I would just walk over the poles, trot over the poles, um and all that and basically just worked up to cantering over them so this is the last day i actually ride him so you can see what the stage that he gets to with the poles are but really like everything that i explained in the last few videos is the basis to it all like even being able to trot over the poles and canter over the poles that all comes from the same you know, getting that softness in his mouth, softness in his neck. Um, with the turning, it just started slow by doing some circles in the trot. And then when I was in the counter, um, sometimes, yeah, he would drift out through his shoulder. I would just pop my whip into my outside hand and use that to help guide him. And he's just such a quick learner. Like once he understood what I wanted and once he understood that generally I'm just aiming him towards poles, he was almost looking for the poles, you know, he, he was looking for them and he knew that's where he would be going. So yeah, you can see in the trot now we have a lot, we have quite a consistent contact. It's just very easy, changing the rain and all that is very good. Changing the bend, he's getting a lot better with. One day I did do some work with um, leg yielding with him. I just do it in the walk with the young horses um, I just kind of teach them that to move away from my inside leg and it really helps with the bend and doing circles you know when he realizes that you know if he's drifting out to the outside and I use my outside leg he knows that he's meant to move away from that leg and then that helps with your straightness as well so I do generally teach my young horses to do very very simple leg yielding so here I'm just trotting over the poles and then we come around over this water tray to change the rain. He gives a little jump. Um, I try and do as much kind of um, exposure to fillers and things like that as I can with the young horses. You know, it should just be as easy as going over a pole. He should see it just as often as he sees poles. And then he shouldn't have any issues with them when he's older. See here, really nice, you know, bending, lying, 
he's really listening to me really tight turn here to go over these poles and he's really soft in his mouth and really listening to me very very happy so then we pop into the canter you can see that our transitions are a lot better you know obviously they're not like exactly on the aid but they he strikes off in the correct lead and um he goes forward here he's obviously very over bent and I, you can see me i kind of lift my hands and try and um you know move my hands forward it's just because he was a little bit fresh this day to be honest and he comes back out of it very soon once I start doing some turns and going over poles, he starts lifting his head again. It's just weakness when he does things like that. So there I had a long stride to the pole and then he landed on the incorrect leg and he did his own little flying change. Like things like that, he's just so balanced. Um, you can't really train balance like that. You know, horses either kind of have it or they don't. And I'm very lucky that he is very balanced. So that's really going to help us um, with our training. And then we come over here to the water tray again. As you see, you know, it does a lovely flying change over the water tray. He's just so balanced. He's so much fun to ride. I could really canter him all day. You can see here now he's in a better, you know, um, position with his head. You know, his nose is sticking out a little bit more. He's not so overbent. Sorry about the filming. My dad was trying to figure out the zoom. Um, but yeah, he's he just feels really good really balanced like a canter all day on him he's really nice and forward so then the last thing I do is I just canter down the distance of pulls a couple of times I think it's a very long three or a short four um because I was jumping out like at a big height so it's not really suitable as a distance for pulls but you can see that I can really hold him and he does the four strides so nicely really sweetly and um I also push him forward and get three strides as well yeah, he's just like for such a young horse he's very very rideable but you know if he's offering up these things then I'm definitely going to take advantage of it and um, by starting to introduce these kind of you know thinking about lengthening and shortening strides and riding over poles like we might as well start all these things early it's not that hard on him to canter over a pole a few times it's not like he's jumping so um, might as well use it to expose him to as much as I can before he is four and he does start actually jumping even this circle is a good example of you know he kind of fought me a little bit on the turn because it was a very um tight turn and he wasn't used to doing that but once he knew he was going to do it the second time he's very very good like he's just a very quick learner and then we do another flying change over it you know he's just oh, i love i love riding him so he has now gone on a break for a couple of months over the winter to just basically mature, digest what he's learned, think about it, and then he's going to come back as a four-year-old and um, we'll get him back into work again and he'll pop some jumps and we'll just see how he goes and play it by ear. Um, we loose jumped him. The, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. And he was just super, you know, he, he was very, very keen, very brave, very bold careful and showed plenty of um talent so yeah we're me and his owner Bruno are really excited um to get him out to some shows next year so that is the journey with Mav over his four weeks I he definitely wasn't the most dramatic and you know um <laughs> exciting of young horses but I think that's how it should be it shouldn't be this big drama you know this booking and broncoing and things like that like it should just be as relaxed as you possibly can. Obviously with a horse like Mav, that's a lot easier than with a horse that's, you know, got a sh lot sharper temperament. Like Mav's just generally very um, easygoing. He's a lovely boy. But yeah, I'm very excited to um, continue his journey next year. And I hope you guys are excited to see him too. Uh, when he's bigger, stronger and more mature after his break. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.